United Airlines beating estimates on both the top and bottom lines in its second quarter. The company says it expects profit to rise despite capacity cuts caused by the grounding of the Boeing 737 MAX. We're going to get over to Phil LeBeau right now in Chicago. And yes, he's joining us with a very special guest. Good morning to you, Phil. Good morning, Andrew. Oscar Munoz, CEO of United Airlines. Oh. Andrew just set this up by explaining that you guys had a fantastic uh, results for the second quarter. You beat on the top and the bottom line. You expended, expanded your pre-tax profit margins, and you raised the lower end of your guidance uh, when it comes for the remainder of this year. What's working right now? Well, uh, first of all, uh, just to reiterate the uh, commentary from the quarter, it was a record uh, second quarter for us. And I think the thing we're most proud of is the fact that we had a lot of issues facing us. So we call them headwinds. Uh, politely, but they're difficult sometimes, but our team has done an amazing job of going through that, not only overcoming uh, the grounding of aircraft, weather, uh, closing of airspace in different countries. Uh, so we're really proud about the, uh, the customer service that we've been able to provide, along with the financial metrics, and really happy to raise the guidance. One the of players. those headwinds is the grounding of the 737 right. MAXs that you have in your fleet, 14 of them. For the second quarter in a row, you guys have said, you know what, we're not going to say how much this cost us, nor are we going to say what the impact is going to be for the remainder of this year. Don't investors have a right to know? Uh, they, they, sure, they sure do, and I think that the, the best thing and the most important thing they need to know is what it's doing to our full-year earnings guidance. And as you know, we just raised it. So we're not trying to be anything other than uh, no, no excuses. That's it's something that impacts, and it's impacting a lot of other folks. Uh, we're confident in the other things we're building, our network strategy, our cost management, and the, the pride of our people in delivering those services. And again, raising that full-year guidance uh, is, an, is an example. I always say proof, not promise. You've got it off the schedule at least through November 3rd, but widely believed within the airline industry. Almost everybody says quietly, look, I don't think it's going to be back on the schedule until at least the end of the year, if not early next year. In your heart, do you actually believe that the MAX will be flying in the fourth quarter? You know, I, I think the more important question or remark, and you've heard me say this before, uh, we are focused on returning that aircraft back to flight safely. And we're going to let the regulators and all the people that are involved in the process do the thing. And whatever time it takes, it'll take. Of course, we'd like to have it done quicker. No one wants it more than our customers, frankly. But it's important that it be safe. So at this point in time, we're just going to let the process play out. And when it's ready, we'll be ready to pivot and get it back into the marketplace. Not sure if you saw the pictures that were online uh, out of uh, the Renton area. Uh, livery for Ryanair used to say 737 MAX on the plane. And there was one that just came out. They've taken the word Max off of the plane. And I know you don't have Max written on the outside of your plane. But does this speak to the fact that there's going to have to be a change in the name because the public is going to be <laughs> resistant to flying this plane? Uh, I, I think we have to be very cognizant of our customers and their perceptions towards flying the aircraft, which is why we've said we were going to be very flexible and very transparent with that. That's what I've said. I'm going to be on that first aircraft just to ensure that whatever comfort it gives to folks. Um, but as far as branding and name, just, that's for somebody else to decide. If, if somebody said to you, would you like to see them take the Max name off? Would you uh, tell, would you tell think, Dennis Mullenberg, take uh, the name away? I don't think we have an opinion on that. I think uh, uh, we look for aircraft to be economic uh, for our flying services I mean, to provide the comfort and safety for our employees and, uh, and customers. One last question regarding your fleet. You bought 19 used 737-700s that you're going to start taking delivery of in December time frame. Does that speak to the fact that you've got capacity growth plans and whether or not you have the max, which you're hoping that you'll have it, but you've got to move forward with those growth plans? That's exactly true. I mean, we've announced a 4 to 6% growth rate over the course of three years, and in order to feel that, we need aircraft. Um, the used aircraft we have have been in the plan for quite some time. It's nothing to do with the max grounding. Uh, we are always looking for, for our, our, our growth to be capital efficient, and we found that used aircraft can help in that regard. Let's talk about the markets that you're seeing right now. Domestically, business is very strong. Internationally, what's happening with Asia? We're hearing from some in the industry that they're seeing, quote unquote, softness or pockets of volatility over there. How uh, would you describe it? You know it? what, I, I think um, Asia as a whole is a great market for us. We're up this, this quarter. Um, specifically, I think the conversation is originally around China specifically. Right. Um, we've been in China for a long time and we have found that companies that have been there for a long time tend to fare a little better than people that haven't. And so we've seen that, although we have seen some volatility. Uh, China, specifically for us, is less than 4% of our, our market, uh, so it's, it's significant, but not, uh, not enough. Uh, we think of the whole Asia market, and that was very positive for us this quarter. Do you attribute that volatility to the trade tensions between the U.S. and China? Uh, I think uh, there's always factors that drive demand, 
and any kind of uncertainty always drives volatility, and I think that's probably what we're seeing. One last question, domestic market. You're seeing strength, leisure travel, corporate travel. Um, is there any, any pause in the market right now that you look at and you say, I'm a little bit worried about this, or do you look at this and say, this is about as strong as it can get? Not that it can't get better, but this is really strong right now. Uh, I think uh, across the world, we always have pockets of strength and pockets of, uh, of areas where we're concerned, so we're always very uh, careful and mindful of that, but domestically, and I think I heard uh, uh, some of the brief banter before about, uh, I think Kevin talking about how he sees the robust market economy, uh, the robust uh, domestic market being uh, that way. I think we feel the same way in the near term. So uh, right now, again, uh, our ability to raise our guidance uh, tells you a little bit of how we're feeling about the market, and it's what we felt in January when you asked me these questions. Oscar Munoz, CEO of United Thanks. Airlines, joining us this morning. Guys, on a day where not only did they beat the street in the second quarter, but as you heard him say, they have raised the lower end of their guidance before for full year earnings.